In this video we're going to take a look at work plans. Now there is already a video on my channel that you can go look for which goes through the creating work plan questions in the exam. This is just going over the theory specifically. So if you're looking for how to answer the questions, you need to check on the playlist and look at that video. So first things first, what is a work plan or a time plan? So a time plan is breakdown of all the individual tasks needed to complete a project with an estimation of how long each task will take. So you can either do this in a table or you can use a Gantt chart and either is fine for your coursework and really for, for real life unless someone specifically tells you you have to use a Gantt chart. So table format might just be um, a list of all your tasks, usually you should number them, then you say what each task is when you're going to start it, when you're going to end it, how many lessons or how many days or weeks it might take and you might have a time equivalent on there as well. This is absolutely fine. Then Gantt chart format is a little bit more detailed. This is quite a basic one created in Excel but you can add things to these, make them yourself and make them look a lot better than this one. So first things first, you need to know the different features of a work plan. So you should have your tasks and your activities, so what you're doing what's involved with doing that. Sometimes you might even have, you know, um, interpret client requirements might be a task and your activity um, might actually say, right, to do this, I need to do this, 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 and this. Then you've got your workflow, so it's making sure that each of your different activities are in the correct order and in the right flow. Then you've got your time scales, which can be start and end dates, so it could just be um, each of the start dates, so whatever, and your overall expected end date. And you should be saying how long it should take to complete each task. You then should have resources, so what you actually need to do it. So do you need a computer, do you need to use Photoshop, do you need to go get a van and take photos of a scene or something. Then you've got your milestones, which are specific points during the activities. So you might, you might say something like, um, by week three we should have finished the first draft. And then you have contingencies, which is extra time you may have at the end that we can allocate. So say for example, you are ill for a week. You can do any work for a week, so we need to have some extra time on the end in case that happens. Um, when I ever, whenever I'm making like a curriculum plan or a scheme of work, I usually put maybe a week on each term or a bunch of weeks at the end for catch up time in case people are off or I'm off or something happens. So, a Gantt chart is a visual representation of the tasks involved in making a product or making something. Now, tasks are allowed to overlap. Um, and usually we individually colour code each task. So you can see here that process one and process two uh, might work side by side, but you might not be able to start process three until process two is finished and so on. So here's an example of one, a very basic one I've created in Excel. I like using Excel for them. Um, if you ask me which ones you use for your coursework, you know, I couldn't possibly say which one you should use, but I'd use um, Excel, but you could use PowerPoint if you wanted to create a table, you could use Word. I just personally like to use Excel. So I've got a list of my tasks, I've numbered them, I've got my description, I've got what resources I need, I've got all my times across here, I've got contingency time, so I've got, I need to have like a key at the bottom or something. So I've got light blue for how long it should take, and I've just got an extra day of contingency at the end of each one. Now, you could have more contingency on different things and less contingency on other ones. And you could have it so you know you've just got loads of contingency at the end for everything if you necessarily need to but I felt this one's just like a nice basic easy one and then I've got milestones now they're not always drawn like mine I like to make mine really obvious so by this point by the third task being completed I should have finished planning and then the trail should be finished by task six or task five you might just have another one of these and might say milestone one here and then you just have another square underneath one I just fine but I just like to make it really obvious when I make mine. So in the exam, you can be asked quite a few questions on work plans. You could be asked what's involved in a work plan. So what do, is it contingencies, milestones, whatever you're saying. You may be given um, a work plan that you've got to say what's wrong with it and uh, critique it. You might have to create a work plan. I know a few years ago, so it's 2020 right now, I think it would be 2018, it might be 2019 exam. There was one where you had to um, put in all the tasks and things all, um, for a set task. You have to write down some of the activities and then put the um, timings in yourself. And you might actually need to, work, um, to label one. Now for the coursework, 
you are going to be expected to create your own work plan as well. So that's something you need to be prepared for, um, which I can show you in a moment. So an example of an exam question here is a work plan for a comic of some sort. So it's got all these different parts, it's got um, all the tasks there, how long they're going to take, how weeks it's got instead of dates. And you have to label tasks, time scales, contingencies, milestones, and activities. So what I'd like to do, just as normal in the other videos, is pause the video and answer the question. It shouldn't take us very long, it's a format question. Okay, so hopefully you've done that. And here come the answers. So we've got tasks with D, time scale was A, contingencies B, milestones E, and activities C. I think the only one that I think was might be quite difficult was milestones being E because the milestones are sort of tiny ones unlike mine, I have all the way across. But again, as I said previously, that's not necessarily the way you do it, it's just one way of doing it. So you can see here that one of the milestones was getting the first review done, or review one done, sorry. So we've got review there as a milestone, that's a milestone, review two is a milestone, and the final print set is a milestone. Obviously when you're actually doing milestones yourself and creating your own work plan, you would obviously label that but this question trying to get you to pick them out. So, but I think time scales is fairly obvious. Contingencies, they like showed there, there, pretty obvious. And activity is fairly obvious as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you very quickly, and it's not going to be in terrible amounts of detail, how you could create your own work plan. So I've got an example here of a zoom out of a basic layout. So. Put your tasks, description, resources, and your dates. Now, if, if you don't know how to do this, so you want to start from stage to if you hold control, press colon or semicolon, it puts in today's dates. I'm going to use that as a guide. And then let's just say I've got these dates here. Like that, these are my dates. I've got client parents, target audience. I've got, let's say we're doing it for RA4 or something. Um, plan comic. Gather assets, create a front cover, create page one, create page two. By well, the anyway, so nothing too detailed. Then I have a description for each and what resource I need, so that can be software, so it might be I'm gonna use Photoshop, I'm gonna use Photoshop, and I'm gonna use storyboard that. And then I can start colouring in my data. So I'm going to say client requirements is going to take me two lessons. So let's say I'm going to have green. So it's going to take me two lessons. Now my target audience is going to take that. Now I might gather my assets as I plan my comics. I might have this running in tandem like that. And I might say it's going to take me something like that. And what I may do is move it the value weight down. I might say milestone one, comic is finished. And then I might not have anything here, and I might just have a different colour for my milestone. Just like in the example from the exam question, that's going to be purple. And then I'm going to add my contingency time. So let's say yellow. So if I run over by a day, this is going to run over. And then what I may even do is just actually say, right, I've got a bit of time here and there, and then I've not got a task here. So what I might say is I've got three days of contingency or something like that. And that's like a really rough one. And once it's filled out, it'll look pretty much spot on. You can have your colours and make it look a lot nicer. And now there are some built-in um, templates as well. So if you go to new and go to more templates, there is an example. If you search for Gantt chart, you've got Project Planner here. You could quite as easily go ahead and take one of these. So you could just go to Project Planner. You've got the actual start date, how much you plan to do it. And you could change it. So you could actually say, you could tell it off and change that to 
contingency. Um, probably get rid of this percent complete, it doesn't really make much sense there, so you probably just get rid of that. Um, same with the percent complete there, and just say plan duration, natural start, contingency. And then you can just say, right, um, activity one, that's going to be you know, client requirements. And you can just change it there. Okay, as long as you change it yourself, changing the colors, you're actually putting your own content and you're actually planning it out, I don't see why you could lose any marks doing it this way. And hopefully you understood the video, if it was anything clear, it made sense. So please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.